Brought to you by wikivd.com Robin Cavendish Robin Francis Cavendish MBE was a British advocate for the disabled medical aid developer and one of the longest-lived Respondents in Britain. Born in Middleton, Derbyshire, Cavendish was affected by polio at the age of 28. Despite being initially given only three months to live, Cavendish paralyzed from the neck down and able to breathe only. With the use of a mechanical ventilator became a tireless advocate for the disabled. Instrumental in organizing the first records of the number of Respondents in Britain and helping to develop numerous devices to provide independence to the paralyzed. Early life and career Robin Francis Cavendish was born 12 March 1930 in Middleton, Derbyshire, England. He attended Winchester College. He attended Royal Military Academy Sandhurst and was commissioned into the 60th Rifles of the King's Royal Rifle Corps, spending seven years in the army eventually attaining the rank of captain. He left the army to join Thompson Smithers in starting up a tea broking business in Africa. In 1957, he married Diana Blacker and returned to Kenya. They had one son Jonathan Cavendish. Polio diagnosis and subsequent career in December 1958 while in Kenya Cavendish became ill with polio. Paralyzed from the neck down, a Nairobi doctor put him on a mechanical respirator that Cavendish needed to breathe making him a respondent. Cavendish flew back to England. He was initially given only three months and then one year to live. According to Jonathan Cavendish, his father's first thought after being struck down by polio was to turn off the machine. Reasoning that Diana was only 25 and telling her you can start again. But as Jonathan states, she wasn't having any of it. Against the advice of his doctors, he left the hospital after a year. For the remainder of his life Cavendish and his wife worked not only to improve the quality of his life, but the lives of other paralyzed people, traveling the world to inspire others as campaigners. For the disabled, Cavendish would often serve as the expert who explained his condition to consultants and nurses. In the 1960s he tracked down and listed the circumstances of all the respondents in Britain compiling the first record of how many people were confined to iron lungs. In 1962 Cavendish and his friend Teddy Hall the Oxford University professor developed a wheelchair with a built-in respirator that freed Cavendish from confinement to his bed which became the model for future devices of its type with Cavendish eventually using a total of 10 different chairs determined that mobility should be available to other polio victims Cavendish raised money from the Ernest Klein Work Charitable Trust for the first dozen chairs and eventually persuaded the then British Department of Health to fund a series of chairs which were manufactured by Teddy Hall's company Littlemore Scientific Engineering using himself as a guinea pig Cavendish tested and helped to market equipment that improved the quality of life of disabled people. Most notable among these was the possum which Cavendish developed with scientists at Stoke Mandeville Hospital and which allowed users to use the telephone turn on a television or adjust a home's central heating with only a left to right movement of their head. Others included a lightweight ventilator that ran on batteries and a modified aircraft seat fitted with electronic aids, Littlemore received government funding to make another 40 chair and ventilator sets. Moved by the plight of families who could never vacation together Cavendish and others, in particular polio specialist Dr. G.T. Spencer the consultant in charge of the Lane Fox unit at St. Thomas Hospital in London co-founded the charity Refresh in 1970 to raise the money toward the construction of the Netley Waterside House. 
a holiday complex are overlooking Southampton Water on the south coast whose facilities provided for the care of severely disabled responauts as they and their families enjoyed the attractive surroundings. The facility opened in 1977. Cavendish was made an MBE in 1974. Personal life Cavendish was an atheist. Among his pastimes was reading newspapers. Cavendish and Diana refused to accept Cavendish's condition as a major restriction, traveling widely until a short time before his death. They often drove from Oxford to London in their were specially adapted van returning home late at night. They also traveled abroad to visit places such as the battlefields of northern France. They also enjoyed receiving visiting friends in their home. According to the Alice and Tim Renton of the Independent Young People found him an irresistible ear to pour confidences into and his stimulating and down-to-earth attitude to problems helped many. His contemporaries would drive across country to ask his advice and enjoy his company. It was as if his sedentary life gave him a broader viewpoint and a sharper vision than the rest of us in his capacity for laughing at as well as with his friends was healthily deflating. Cavendish was described by the Renton's ass, naturally unsentimental whose love for Diana Jonathan and daughter-in-law, Leslie Ann Rogers was both well concealed and totally evident. According to the Rentons, Cavendish questioned mercilessly and passed on gossip as happily as he received it. But somehow the malice disappeared as it went through him. He had a natural graciousness, his lack of evident resentment at his own condition made helping him a positive pleasure. Death and Legacy Cavendish died on 8 August 1994 at Drayton St. Leonard, Oxfordshire, England at age 64, becoming a medical phenomenon as one of the longest living polio survivors in Great Britain. In their obituary on him the Rentons stated to know Robin Cavendish was to know the personification of courage. Many people achieve moments of great courage. Few are called on to show it continuously for 36 years. On 27 November 1995, the Robin Cavendish Memorial Fund was created with Diana Jonathan and Leslie Cavendish among its trustees. Its purpose was to provide grants to individuals and organizations for the purpose of advancing the health and saving the lives of people with disabilities. In 2014 it was merged with a charity that Robin and Diana Cavendish previously founded Refresh into the Cavendish Spencer Trust, which provides holiday and respite breaks for people with severe disability due to neurological or neuromuscular disorders. The trust is named for Cavendish and his close friend Jeffrey Spencer, who aided Cavendish in his advocacy for the disabled. In media, Cavendish's son Jonathan, a film producer who runs the production company The Imaginarium Studios, with actor, director Andy Serkis, commissioned writer William Nicholson to write a screenplay on his father's life and work. The film Breathe is directed by Serkis and opens October 2017. In the film, Cavendish is portrayed by Andrew Garfield. Brought to you by Wikivd.com. Would you like to?